back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are finally going to be using those antlers that we made last week. I thought it'd be really fun to make a stag with them and since the seasons are changing I thought it'd be clever to make it fire and ice themed. Anyways, let's get started. Okay guys, the first thing that we're going to work on is going to be the sewing for our stag. So we're going to finish the body up first and then we can move on to making the clay and all that stuff. So right here is the pattern that I'm going to be using to make the body. Now the legs are really short on my pattern because the very bottom half, basically half the leg, is going to be clay. I also have the pattern broken up into different segments because I'm going to have the body a bunch of different colors. The main body is going to end up being a white, but I'm also going to be adding some reds and some blues to it. So the first thing that I'm going to work on is I'm going to work on the sewing for the sides of the body. So I'm just going to cut out all the different pieces that I need for the side pieces and then I'm going to sew them together kind of like a puzzle piece. After we have that all put together we can then work on the other pieces. So what we're going to need is we're going to need a belly piece and we're also going to need the pieces for the inside parts of the legs. So the belly piece was broken into three different pieces because I needed a strip of it to be the red and white, not just solid white. That way we could have the little fluff around the chest be one consistent color. So I ended up sewing that piece together and then I'm going to take the inside parts of the legs and I'm going to lay them out on the sides of the body and I'm going to sew down the front of them. I'm only doing the front because we need the backs open so we can add this to a wireframe later. And then once we have the legs done, we're going to move on to adding the belly piece to it. So we're just going to take that strip of fabric and we're going to sew it right down the middle of the two pieces. Okay, so this is all the sewing for the body. The last thing that I'm going to be working on is the tail. So I'm going to take a strip of fabric that's going to be white and then a tuft of fabric for the very end, which is going to be the red and white. So I'm going to take the left and the right of the tuft of fur for the very end of the tail and I'm going to sew down one side of it. After that I'm going to connect it to the strip of fabric for the length of the tail. Once you have all those pieces put together we can then fold this in half with the fur on the inside and we're going to sew down the other side. We can then flip it right side out and add a little bit of stuffing to the end of the tail. So that's all the sewing that we can work on right now. We need to leave everything kind of open so we can add it to the wire frame. So now we're going to work on the clay pieces. Okay, so we're going to start on the clay legs first. I already have a wire frame set up and these are actually already connected and everything. I figured with the legs being mostly clay, it'd be best to build it off of the wire frame altogether instead of like connect it to a wire frame later. So that's why we're going to have the legs connected right now. Now I did reinforce the portion of the wire that we're covering in clay just so that it doesn't bend because if this portion of the wire bends, your clay is going to end up cracking. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make the hooves. So I'm going to take equal little balls of clay, I've kind of coned off the very top of it, and then I'm going to push my wires into place into the clay. I want the bottom of this to be nice and flat, that way our stag can stand on its own. I'm not going to do too much to the hoof because there's not going to be a whole lot of detail. I want them to be nice and smooth, so I'm just going to add a little slit down the middle to make it split into two, and then I'm going to bake this in the oven for probably about 20 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. Just enough so that we don't have to worry about losing progress or bumping our clay. After that's out of the oven and is cooled to touch, we're going to work on the back half of the leg. So this portion is going to be fur, kind of. It's going to be sculpted fur. So we're going to just cover this in a complete thick layer of clay, and then we're going to use our tools to kind of scratch in the texture of fur. Now if you want, you could just have this portion of the leg furred as well, but I really wanted to make sure it looked nice and thin, and I thought it'd be a lot more durable if I had the whole leg clay instead of just the front half of it clay. So we're going to do this to both of the front legs and both of the back legs. I'm going to get all the fur texture that I like. I'm going to make sure to kind of blend it into the bottom where the hoof is. And then we're going to bake this again at 275 Fahrenheit for probably about probably 30 minutes this time, just because we have a little bit more clay. Okay, our legs are out of the oven and have cooled again, and we can work on them. We're going to work on the front now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to add a little bit of fur texture right above the hoof, and then the front of the legs I actually want to have kind of like scaled armor. So I'm just going to take little balls of clay, kind of oval them off a little bit, and then I'm going to mush them onto the front. I'm going to have them overlapping each other just a little bit. So after I have the front of my leg completely covered in scales, I'm going to use my tools to straighten everything up, and then I'm going to do the same thing to all the other legs. Once we have this done, they're going to go in the oven for one final bake at 275 Fahrenheit for probably about 45 minutes this time. 
Okay, now we're gonna move on to making the clay face. Now the antlers for this I made last week in my last video, so if you didn't catch that, I'll leave the links down below in the description so you can watch that and see how I made those. But right now we're gonna sculpt the face. So we're gonna take those antlers that I've done already and are gonna start building up kind of a ring of clay on our glass container to hold those into place. After we have that in place, we're going to add a lump of tin foil for the shape of the head and we're gonna start covering that in clay as well. I'm going to get everything completely covered, I'm going to smooth it out, make sure it's blended into the clay for my antlers, and then we can start adding the detail. Now we're not going to add a ton of detail because I'm actually going to be furring this face, so we're just going to mainly be focusing on the shape of the head, the positioning of the eyes, and where the nostrils and stuff are going to be. So the first thing I'm going to work on is going to be the mouth and the nostrils. So I'm going to take a strip of clay to lay out for a lip. This is going to be the upper lip and I'm just going to take that, lay it onto the clay and blend it upwards into the rest of the clay. I'm going to use my tools to straighten up the lines a little bit and just make sure everything is nice and even. And then I might even add a bottom lip to this if it looks like it has too much of an overbite. Sometimes you don't have to but other times it just looks a little wonky. Then I'm going to take my tools and I'm going to push into the clay where I want the nostrils to be. Now we're not going to make these super deep or anything or even add a lot of detail to this because most of this is actually going to be furred except for the very tip of the nose. We're going to have it kind of where the fur fades into the clay. Um, it'll make more sense when I start adding the fur to the face. But we're basically just marking out the holes for where the nostrils are going to go. I'm going to make sure the edges are nice and smooth but everything is at least deep enough to where it looks like it has an opening. After that, I'm going to add the eyes to the face. Now, I don't want huge eyes, but I don't want beady little eyes either. So I'm going to try and get them kind of right in the middle where they look nice. I'm going to position those little balls of clay right where I want the eyes, and then I'm going to start adding eyelids around them. After I have the eyes finished, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some holes. That way we can add some fabric ears later. Sometimes it just helps to have a nice hole to push the fabric into the ear so that it's a little bit more stable on the face. So I'm just going to make a hole right behind each eye. And then we're pretty much done with our face, so I'm going to put this in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for roughly about 45 to 55 minutes. After all of your clay pieces are out of the oven and have completely cooled, we can start on the painting. Now we're not going to be painting the face, we're just going to be painting the legs and the antlers right now. We're going to wait on the face until after we have it furred. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the legs and I'm going to primer the back of them white. I'm not going to mess too much with the scales on the front because I'm going to actually use a different paint so it doesn't really matter what color those are. So again, the clay fur on the back of the leg is going to be painted white. Once that's dried, I'm going to add a little bit of a red highlight to the front legs because the fur fabric around where the front legs are has those red highlights and I want to have it kind of continue down the front leg. The back legs, we're not going to add any highlights or anything to because the way the fur on the leg is, the blue that we have on the body doesn't really connect with the back of the leg, so it makes more sense to just leave it white. And then for the hooves, I wanted them to be a nice vibrant blue, similar to the fur that we have going down the back of the stag. And the last little bit of painting for the legs is we need to paint the armor on the front. So I'm going to be painting these a nice silver color, and to get a good silver, you usually need to use like a modeling paint or something, so I'm going to use that. So I'm just going to go over all the scales on the fronts of the legs, and then we're going to set these aside to dry. Once the paint on our legs are completely dry, we are going to apply a thin layer of resin over everything to protect it, and then after that, those are going to have to sit overnight to finish drying. Okay, now we're going to paint those antlers that we made last week. So I'm going to take a really, very light baby blue, and I'm going to go over the whole antler on both of them. I might have to do about two coatings just because this is a very light color. Now this is honestly all the painting I'm going to be doing. I'm going to let all of this paint dry and then I have a kind of a technique to get them nice and glittery because I want them to be nice and glittery. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to be resining them now. So I'm going to paint on a thin layer of resin over the whole antler. Make sure to cover everything. And then before our resin dries, right after we apply it, or maybe a few minutes if you want it to thicken up a little bit, I'm going to take my glitter and I'm going to sprinkle it over it. So this is going to end up sticking into the resin. It's not going to be nice and shiny. It's actually going to be bumpy like it's glittery. But the glitter is going to be locked into the resin so it's not going to come off or anything. 
I found this works a lot better than glittering after the resin or before the resin because if you glitter before you add resin, it's going to have a gloss and it's going to kind of cover up your glitter. But if you glitter after you resin your antlers, the glitter has a chance of coming off and it just doesn't stay on very well. So we're going to make sure every inch of our antler is completely covered in glitter and we're going to set them aside to dry. Now these are a thing that you might want to peek on in between drying to make sure that the resin isn't running off and creating streaks in your glitter. If it's doing that, just add a little bit more glitter to the portion that's kind of messed up. This happens mainly because the resin is still runny and it's going to get thicker as it goes. So you want to check on it maybe a few hours afterwards and then it'll still be sticky to where it'll take the glitter, but it won't be too runny to where it'll just keep messing up. Okay, it's the following day, all of our stuff is dried and it's time to put our stag together. So we're going to take our legs with the wire that they're connected on and we're going to take a wire for the spine and we're going to put our wire frame together first. So we're just going to bunch those wires together and use a thinner wire to wrap them nice and tightly together. Now normally a wire frame like this would be just fine, but because our head has such large antlers and it's pretty heavy, I'm going to reinforce the wire for the neck and the front legs. So basically I have a long piece of wire bent in half and I'm going to wrap it down the neck wire and down the leg wires as well. And this helps reinforce the wire to make it sturdy enough to hold the head up. After that's done, we're going to start adding the fabric body to the wire frame. So we're going to run the legs through the fabric body and we're going to start gluing the fabric around the base of the leg. So we're going to take our E6000 glue and a little bit of hot glue and we're going to glue the fabric around the base at the very top of the clay foot. We're going to do this to both of the front and both of the back legs. We're going to let this dry a little bit and then we can sew down the back of the legs so that they're nice and closed up and we can stuff them. After we're done with the legs, we're going to add the tail to the piece. So we're just going to take that tail that we sewed earlier and we're going to run it over that wire for the tail. We're then going to sew the base of the tail in place on the body. After that, we can add our head to the piece. So we're going to take our stag's head and we're going to glue it to the wire frame for the neck. We're going to connect that, make sure it's nice and sturdy, and then we can start gluing the fabric around the base of the head. Now I do need to adjust the pattern for our neck mainly because I made the head a little too round so it doesn't close up all the way at the back of the head. So I'm going to cut a little bit of the fur fabric that we used for the neck into a shape of a triangle and we're going to glue that to the back of the head. Okay, now that the head is in place, now we just need to stuff the rest of the body and close up the back of the stag. And that's pretty much all the sewing that you're going to have to do now. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a hair trimmer and I'm going to go over the fur for the legs of the stag. I'm not going to mess up too much of it, I'm just going to focus on the very front and I'm going to kind of shave them up a little bit. I'm also going to be shaving the sides of the neck to kind of thin it out a bit. Okay, now we can finally work on the face of the stag. That's pretty much the only thing we have left right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the ears to the piece. And I just made these out of felt. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue in the hole for the ear and I'm going to push the ear into place. We're going to let that dry. After I put the ears in place, I decided that I wanted to add one extra detail to it. I wanted to continue the kind of glitteriness effect that we have from the antlers and I want to continue it down the face. So I have these little plastic kind of gems. They look like glass but they're actually plastic and I'm going to glue a good portion of it over the forehead of the stag. I want to make sure they're nice and close together. We can add some extra details to this later so if you don't have everything completely covered don't worry about it I'm gonna go over it with paint and glitter and stuff but I'm just making kind of a cluster of crystals to make it kind of look icy or whatnot on the forehead and then after I had that in place I'm finally going to fur the face so I'm gonna take my E6000 glue and I'm going to cover a portion of the face in the glue I'll make sure it's nice and thin and then I'm gonna take some fur trimmings and I'm gonna push that into the glue I'll make sure the glue is completely covered in fur I'm gonna brush away any extra fur and we're gonna continue this going down the face until everything is completely covered we're going to let this dry for a little bit and then after it's dried we're going to brush away any extra fur and we can start on our painting. So for the painting what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of try and add a little bit of gray around the eyes and the nose. Mainly the nose, not so much the eyes, but I do need to still paint those as well. 
So I'm going to add my paint and then I'm going to use my brushes to kind of blend it into the fur. I'm also going to use a toothbrush because I found this actually works really well to add color to the fur without like uh, getting it clumpy or anything like that. So I'm going to just gradually darken up the nose a little bit and then once that's dried I'm going to paint the inside parts of the nostrils a nice dark black color just so it looks a bit more defined. I'm going to make sure my edges are nice and straight because these aren't really really deep but I want to give it the illusion that they actually go into the nose. For the eyes, I want to keep with the kind of iciness, so I'm going to paint them a nice blue color, and then I'm going to make the iris of the eye a lighter blue color. While the eye is drying, I'm actually going to start adding some facial markings to it. I want to bring a little bit more red to the face, since the only red is right now on the chest of the piece. So I'm going to add some line work and stuff, and they're just random to make it look a little bit more interesting. And then after the eye is nice and dry, we're going to add the pupil to it. So we're just going to add a black circle to it where we want the pupil to be. We're going to let that dry as well, and we're going to add some white highlights to the eye. Now this is probably all the painting I'm going to do probably, so I'm going to let everything dry, and then I'm just going to apply a little bit of resin over the eye and then the crystals on the forehead. I'm not going to resin over the fur or anything because I want them to be kind of dull and fur texture still. I don't want them to be shiny. So we're going to let that dry overnight and then our stag is all finished. Okay guys, and that's how I made a fire and ice themed stag. I had so much fun making him, and I'm going to have him along with a bunch of other creatures in my Etsy shop. So if anyone is interested in buying them, go ahead and check the links down below for that. I'm also currently having a after Halloween sale, so everything that was Halloween themed from last month is going to be 25% off. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!